गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू शरद चंद्र आई एस अकाडमी डेली करंट अफेयर्स एनालिसिस फॉर द डेट ऑफ ट्वेंटी सिक्स अप्रैल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू सो द टॉपिक्स फॉर टुडे और डिटेल्स ऑफ द डेंग्यू फीवर आउटब्रेक इन पंजाब अबाउट अ न्यू बिल दैट इज प्रोटेक्शन एंड एनफोर्समेंट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इन एयरक्राफ्ट ऑब्जेक्ट्स बिल ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू डिटेल्स ऑफ सी पी ई सी चाइना पाकिस्तान इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर about the meteor shower and about geo 111 of telangana government these are the five major topics which we are going to discuss today coming to the first topic about the dengue fever outbreak in punjab so so recently if you see punjab has reported already 467 dengue cases from between january to april this is again a very worrisome pro- worrisome uh, issue because dengue fever is expected to Okay, dengue fever is expected to rise during the season of monsoon. Okay, during the season of monsoon, generally it is expected that there are more number of dengue cases reported in India, particularly in the Punjab region. Sorry, Rajasthan region. Sorry, sorry, Rajasthan region. But here, if you see um, the even before the monsoon, even before monsoon, the number of cases there are there is huge rise in number of cases reported in Rajasthan. If you see the dengue uh, disease has been declared as a perennial disease in the state means which is continuous there is no break for report uh, reporting of these dengue fever cases in uh, Rajasthan okay so it is uh, decide, it is declared as a perennial disease so perennial disease is a disease uh, in which the cases are continuously reported throughout the year okay so so that's why So they say that uh, it is a worrisome, worrisome aspect because even before monsoon and at the same time it is perennial throughout the year cases are being reported. If you see about uh, uh, these uh, dengue fever, what is the primary cause of the dengue fever is a mosquito bite. So the mosquito called as Aedes aegypti mosquitoes spread the dengue illness even in the winter and rainy seasons. So that what worries the health department. now the thing is the uh, what is the primary cause as i said is the mosquito breeding so if you see uh, inadequate techniques to reduce the ma- number of mosquito breeding and there are no control mechanisms in place in rajasthan and uh, recent increase of the population urbanization without planning unplanned urbanization disposal of un uh, garbage so in our locality in the surroundings so instead of proper disposal of the garbage in the dumping yards uh, disposal of garbage in the locality in the colonies and vector mosquito distribution so all these became the reason for the increase of the dengue cases in rajasthan okay these are the reasons if you see uh, why there are more number of cases being reported in rajasthan these are the cases these are the reasons which have been observed okay So, coming to the facts regarding the dengue fever, it is very simple. Uh, it is a global disease transported transmitted by female mosquito of Aedes, okay, which is also called as Aedes aegypti mosquito. Okay, next. So, generally they fly up to 400 meters. All these are these facts are uh, important for film's point of view. But coming to the main's point of view, you must be, all these facts whether it is mosquito borne illness, major uh, severe dengue, maybe lethal. so it is estimated that 100 to 400 million people each year will suffer because of this dengue fever so all these come uh, are important for prelims but coming to the mains what you have to concentrate coming to the mains you have to concentrate first on the causes so what are the primary causes for the uh, spread of dengue fever in rajasthan and at the same time you must be able uh, you must be in a position uh, to suggest to give suggestions if suppose you are de- if the question demands to give suggestions for the betterment of the health facilities in rajasthan you must be in a position to provide the enough number of suggestions right so this is a topic about the health so you must be uh, prepared means whatever the health related questions you can use this data while writing the health related answers and coming to, uh, next topic of the day is about the draft bill draft bill draft bill means this uh, means out uh, a model bill has been 
prepared so draft bill means a model bill has been prepared and kept for public to review so we as a public can read this draft bill and suggest whatever the changes you want okay so this is now out for the public for suggestions and opinions so you can read the draft protection and enforcement of interest in aircraft projects and you can suggest and uh, whatever the changes you can suggest and uh, the government will take the source uh, those uh, suggestions into consideration right so so once the draft protection is kept for the public and uh, it will be taken by the parliament uh, then once the bill is passed it will become the active one next what is the context as i said so we means everyone were being asked to provide some feedback on the proposed legislation regarding the aircraft objects okay i'll explain you what are the main points in this object in this uh, particular bill so then you can if you want you can give some feedback so this uh, bill has been prepared by ministry of civil aviation okay what are the highlights of the bill very very important point single point is nothing but generally if uh, we if suppose you are a aircraft business you are doing a aircraft business and you want flights to do the business so you may get the flights on lease you may get the flights on rent okay you may buy the flight but as it is more costlier to buy the uh, flights generally companies uh, will uh, take the flights on rent or lease then they will run the business so that's how means basing upon the demand the number of flights can be increased through leasing or renting so that's how most of the flight bus- uh, aircraft business is, is going on now the problem is there are several conventions international conventions are there Uh, in dealing with such uh, businesses but however even though india signed these conventions way back in 2001 2008 before uh, almost 10 15 years back we don't have a legal framework satisfying those conventions if you see the conventions earlier there are uh, these conventions like cape town convention on international mobile equipment interest so this convention we have signed it india has signed it okay but we don't have a strong uh, legal background okay legal background in india to support this convention so if you see the cape town convention it is a international treaty aimed at making the movable uh, transfer of movable property easy that means transfer of flight from foreign company to indian company it will be easier if we follow this convention how to make it easier and all so 83 nations have signed and ratified this but however even though we ratified we did not have a strong uh, support of any law any legal framework uh, in dealing with such things so this treaty also defines uh, the standards to follow in case of sale security interest leases and uh, what what if uh, how to make the contracts and uh, what are the legal remedies if there is default and uh, about what about reposition that means one uh, like a flight will be given and again repossessed again taken back so what is the indu- impact on the state in case of bankruptcy laws so about all these this particular cape town convention on international mobile equipment interest will deal with all these means how to sell how uh, security leasing contracts legal remedies in case of agreements uh, default in agreements reposition okay what are the bankruptcy laws regarding to this so everything uh, has been dealt with this convention so india has also signed and ratified this convention now moving on to now what we have done so this is passing of this draft bill which i am talking about is a step towards the cape town convention is a step towards the cape town convention now coming back so if you see even though we signed the cape town convention some of the laws in india are creating obstacles okay some of the laws in india are creating obstacles for this international marketing of the aircrafts for example if you see our company the companies act of 2013 bankruptcy code of 2016 okay or in contravention with the cape town convention okay insolvency and bankruptcy code or uh, uh, companies act of 2013 are in contravention they are not many of the provisions of these two laws or in opposition or in contravention with the cape town convention and proposal so this is creating obstacles this is creating hindrances 
and this is not encouraging much of the aircraft business uh, or aircraft dealing between foreigners and indian aircraft businessmen so if you see the uh, coming to the highlights of the bill now so as you understood that there was a convention international convention dealing with such things even though india signed it we don't have a legal framework to support it so this particular law which i am talking about now that is a protection and enforcement of interest in the aircraft objects this the this particular law is giving is uh, providing some legal framework regarding that convention okay regarding this convention of cape town right cape town is a capital city of uh, south africa so if you see the bill implements the terms of the convention on international as i said just now so this is uh, which was passed in 2001 in cape town okay so even though we signed it way back in 2008 it almost like uh, 15 years okay, almost 50 after 15 years we are framing a legal work so for example creditor default remedies a uh, legal framework everything was given in this uh, particular act now what happens what is the advantage the advantage is it will make the process simpler for the international aircrafts okay to repossess and transfer planes out of india in case of financial dispute with the inter- indian airlines okay i'll explain what is this point so this point is very important actually for example uh, for ex- this this case uh, uh recently you know that the jet airways jet airways has stopped the business in india jet airways has stopped the business in india in 2019 now there are many uh, international international aircrafts are there aircraft business com- companies are there which gave flights to jet airways on lease okay on lease flights were given to jet airways on lease now jet airways has been shut down its business in india so the flights have to be given back but our companies act on insolvency and bankruptcy code or create created so many obstacles in uh, giving back the flights and settling the disputes so lot of disputes have remained unsettled so keeping that scenario international aircraft leasing companies international aircraft leasing companies that means these international aircraft will give flights on lease for example if i am a company a who is want to run a flight business i have only two flights say suppose i have only two flights i want to start the aircraft business now i mean i am doing the aircraft business but i have only two flights now the inc- there was lot of increase in the demand but i don't have money to buy the new aircraft and at the same time i feel that it is not so economical to buy the new aircraft in short what i will do is i will go to a company called b which is a foreign company a company called b which is a foreign company which has some flights i will get the flights on lease to operate in india so two more flights i'll get so now i have four flights two of my own and two flights on lease from the company of b from a foreign company b which is a international uh, leasing company so i will get the two flights now because of some or other reason my business uh, was shut down my business was shut down or i became bankrupt or some disputes have been an, uh, arised between a and b between my company and b company so financial disputes now b company wanted to repossess okay repossess that means retake their flights and transfer their flights of planes toward to b so these two flights which i brought from b will shall be I mean, will be given to b again but i am creating because of some disputes because of some no clarity in the thoughts uh, i am keeping i am not giving means a company is not giving these two flights now and at the same time companies act of 2013 insolvency and bankruptcy court is also not allowing the b to take these two flights out of india in case of the financial dispute with the indian airline so a is a indian airline b is a foreign airline so the dispute was there so b is unable to take these two flights so this is the legal framework as of now now the problem is the problem is like this if uh, when i started this company a yeah, and have two flights and my as the demand increases i want two more flights when i go to b and asking two more flights b is not showing interest to give flights to indian companies i hope you understood the point the b company is that is foreign company foreign aircraft leasing companies are not showing interest 
to give planes to indian airlines why because the legal framework in india is not so easy the reposition of the flights in case of financial dispute is very difficult that's why b company is not giving the airline uh, flights on hire to the indian airlines so that is the that is the reason why by passing this particular law the process is made very easy in case of financial disputes the foreign company can easily take away its flights easily reposition its flights so that is the main criteria behind passing this laws so the proposed law allows for the reposition of the aviation object whether it is flight or whatever uh, its sale or lease or the collection of money in case of dispute okay from its use and deregistration it is making means the process is made very simpler now so that's the reason expected it is expected this law after passing of this law it is expected that international aircraft leasing companies will provide more and more aircrafts to indian airlines because they can in case of any dispute they can easily take away take back their flights or planes and it also provides some remedies while the claim is being adjudicated okay that's the reason and protects the debtor's claim so suppose b is giving flight so he is he is a debtor so he can claim some remedies from the indian buyer during the bankruptcy okay so it is nothing this particular process this particular law is nothing but on one side it is satisfying the cape town protocol on one side it is cape town uh, satisfying the cape town convention on the international interest in mobile equipment on the other side it is also providing it is also making the process easy for international aircraft leasing companies to give and take the flights to indian airlines so now all indian airlines can happily go to the foreign leasing companies and get the flights so foreign companies can also give the fly, uh, expected they are expected to give the flights because the process is being made simpler to take up take back their flights in case of financial disputes right so this is all about this uh, enforcement so it is nothing but a reform made by or law passed by ministry of civil aviation in order to encourage more deals more leases between the indian aircrafts businessmen indian aircraft indian airlines in and foreign leasing companies so we can expect the increase in number of flights if this particular law comes into force so if you see the convention comprises of four protocols all were signed by india instrument of aircraft aircraft and aircraft engine signed in 2001 railway ruling it is also signed in 2017 assets in orbit okay so that is also signed in 2000 mining agriculture construction equipment so all these means we are we this particular law is dealing only with aircraft but aircraft but we have other dealing with railways orbit assets means satellite equipment mining agriculture construction equipment so these can also be given in lease and taken back whenever there are any disputes or loss by the foreign companies right so moving to the third topic that is details of china pakistan economic corridor so before discussing this let me show you the map that is so this is china pakistan economic corridor proposed china pakistan economic corridor cepc which passes through the pakistan occupied kashmir so from china okay from china it passes through the pok region gilgit baltistan region and enters into pakistan so through throughout the pakistan it is in this some belt as a part of belt and road initiative china is sponsoring uh, so many road networks rail networks and pipelines to connect with the gwadar airport ah, sorry seaport gwadar seaport as well as karachi seaport so this is obviously a worry some to india so we will see what uh, what are the background behind this particular cpc so if you see uh, the thing is pakistan new administration you know that after the imran khan uh, so the new uh, the new government has been established in pakistan this new government has dissolved as dissolved the cpc it discontinued the cpc authority it dissolved the cpc authority citing saying that it is a redundant organization 
ओके रिटर्डेंट ऑर्गनजेशन दट वेस्टेड द रिसोर्स दट स्क्वाड द रिसोर्स हिंडेड द कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड आंबिशियस रीजनल सो दे से दट इट इज एंबिशियस प्रोजेक्ट दे अग्री दट दिस इज एंबिशियस रीजनल कनेक्टिविटी प्रोजेक्ट बट दिस पर्टिकुलर अथारी सीपीईसी अथारी इज नाट नाट वर्किंग एट द लेवल नाट वर्किंग अप टू द लेवल नाट इट इज स्क्वाडरिंग द रिसोर्स एंड इट इज हिंडरिंग द प्रोजेक्ट unnecessarily that's why it they say pakistan is saying that cpec authority is a redundant organization so we are dissolving the cpec authority it is not that they are connect disconnecting the, the relations with china or uh, discontinuing the cpec it's only they are dissolving the cpec authority saying that this particular authority is not working properly not working up to the expected levels okay but however what is let us see the background cpec authority was established in 2019 by an ordinance in pakistan so to speed up to speed up the whatever the projects or operations within the cpsp all the road networks the rail networks pipeline networks have been proposed as a part of cps cpc so the cpc authority is expected to speed up the process in but it is said by the pakistan that the, instead of speeding up the process the cpc authority is acting as a hindrance acting as a hindrance means it, it it itself became an obstacle for the continuation of the projects so it is ex- actually authority is expected to find some new growth drivers and a new potential has to be exploited and speed up the process but uh, pakistan is blaming that cpc authority failed in doing such things so the acronym of cpec is comprehensive plan for environmental control authority comprehensive plan for environmental control authority so china pakistan in uh, so this cpec which is china pakistan economic corridor is <coughs> in general <coughs> cpec whereas this cpec authority <coughs> whereas in this cpc authority the cpc is meaning of cpc is comprehensive plan for environmental control so the cpc started operations in 2015 so as a part of uh, really means uh, linking as a part of belt and road initiative this was a very big initiative started by uh, president xi jinping to in to increase the influence of china okay to increase the influence of china in asia south asia okay so worldwide worldwide links with beijing so with infrastructure projects for example there was a 3000 km cpc is made up of highways railroads pipelines proposed agreement between china and pakistan so it also aims to link with gwadar with china's xinjiang region okay northwest province of xinjiang with a network of rail road everything so that's what i showed here so the gwadar airport has been linked with the xinjiang province of the china okay through this project so the project would be financed heavily means china will provide loans to pakistan loans are provided to pakistan and the with these loans the belt and road initiative many roads many pro- railway projects will be constructed so linking the chinese area with the gwadar airport so as china does not have a direct link to the indian ocean it is trying a lot to get the direct link with the indian ocean through myanmar pakistan okay so so it wanted to dominate to some extent in the indian ocean so what is the concern of india the concern of india is first of all it is progressing through pok why because pok is a pakistan occupied kashmir so according to the agreement agreement of accession instrument of accession according to the instrument of accession signed by maharaja of kashmir with indian government maharaja hari singh with the indian government pok is part of india pok is part of india if you see this particular area this particular area pok gilgit baltistan region of pok and other regions of pok are part of india according to the instrument of accession signed by kashmir uh, kashmir king with india so it belongs to indian territory according to the india but the road and initiative the cpc is going across pok and the second is chinese goal to secure the godar port and also for their presence in indian ocean 
is disturbing the indian security okay it is a concern for indians external security because the presence of china more presence of china in indian ocean arabian sea through the gwadar airport creates disturbance for indian security and according to the others it is also supporting the pakistan's economy because we know that the pakistan state sponsor terrorism is disturbing the india okay so in many ways we can say that it will be a red rag for india so it is a uh, red rag for india creating disturbances in our society <laughs> economy and all so wealthier and stronger pakistan so if a wealthier and stronger pa- pakistan supported terrorism come uh, will may create more disturbance to india both china and pakistan have uh, trust deficit with india we know that they both have border disputes with india if they combine means if they combine together and uh, if they so obviously the appeal is more and uh, our uh, uh, what do you say in global at global platform also uh, the appeal will be more if they both unite together so that's why it will again afflict the india relation with both china and pakistan so the tensions arise between the relations of uh, india with china as well as with pakistan okay so this is all about cpec but uh, okay uh, so the cpec concept uh, lies between the relations of india and pakistan india and china so the relations between uh, and also hindrance for the india to become a global leader okay so moving on to the next topic about the meteor shower on april 22nd if you see lyric meteor showers increased a lot in the indian sky and will continue okay will continue with the same rate until 29th of april okay what is this meteor showers how they come and also what are the effect on earth surface we will discuss all these topics okay so if you see lyrids or sh- parts of comet thatcher so there is a comet called thatcher so these lyrids which are parts of comet thatcher are orbiting the earth at a distance of these many kilometers 1 million kilometers okay 1.6 million kilometers the lyrids of the comet thatcher are orbiting around the earth so in 45 years the comet thatcher which is now moving away from the sun will begin its trek back to sun okay in 45 years that is going this in future comet thatcher which is moving away from the sun when again move towards the sun okay now it is moving away from the sun after 45 years it will move towards the sun so if you see the storm versus shower means what is the difference and all generally for every 30 years for every 30 years there is a shower shower means rapid that means hundreds and thousands of the meteors will fall onto the earth surface for onto the earth's atmosphere sorry so every year meteors can be seen every hour meteors can be seen hundreds and thousands for every this happens for every 33 years it happened in 2002 it happened in 1966 so lot many hundreds to thousands of meteors will come into the earth's atmosphere okay every hour there are at least a thousand meteors thousands of meteors come onto the earth's atmosphere okay so that was uh, uh, leonidas leonid stever okay if you see leo it is a leo leo is a uh, we know that uh, in our uh, astrono- uh, astrology also we use the concept of leo so as a part of leonid is a part of the leo uh, star network okay leo network that's why it is named as leonid so what are these meteor showers so uh, some comets will discharge the rock and ice particles into the atmosphere into our atmosphere as they orbit the sun they generate so these rock and ice particles are known as meteors okay meteor showers occurs when earth passes through the debris left by these comets so the comets may uh, leave the debris somewhere in somewhere somewhere in the space like this so these debris are left over if suppose the earth's orbit passes through these debris then we may experience the meteor shower okay if you see what is the difference between asteroid comet meteoroid meteor meteoroid then the concepts are like this so now this make uh, clear the confusion in you regarding the usage of these terms first of all asteroid is a stony body revolving around the sun 
generally small and inactive known as this asteroid so asteroid is nothing but a small stone body revolving around the sun so it is a part of solar system it is small and inactive okay so what about the comet the comet on the other side is a small but it is an active object whose ices or uh, means whose eyes can evaporate in the sunlight producing dust and gas in the environment rare occasions dust or gas tail also so a comet the difference between asteroid and a comet is asteroid is inactive whereas comet is active that means it is providing more uh, evaporating the sunlight producing dust it's uh, yeah, i mean more it is changing the gas environment to some extent so that's why comet is active asteroid is inactive so if you join these two that means asteroid comet okay comet plus roid met plus roid becomes the meteoroid so it is nothing but a small comet or asteroid both it can be a comet or asteroid that orbits around the sun okay meteoroids is a common word for both comet and asteroid common word for both comet and asteroid is meteoroid okay so coming to what is meteor what is meteor and what is meteoroid a meteor is nothing but a light phenomena that occurs when the meteoroid okay meteor meteor is nothing but a light phenomena occurs when any meteoroid penetrates into the earth's atmosphere you know that we have the ionosphere if this is earth we have ionosphere so there are you know that the atmosphere consists of strat troposphere stratosphere mesosphere exosphere so exosphere in exosphere we have ionosphere okay so this exosphere is protecting earth from such meteor attacks so the meteor whoever the meteor means whatever the meteor whatever the size of the meteor uh, when entering into earth this ionosphere will create means our charges will be there rapid collisions will be there with the charges so creates lot of heat energy that's the reason why all the meteors will break down within the exosphere they may not reach the earth's atmosphere okay so the uh, there are very few which reaches the earth atmosphere but the size is also very less okay so during this journey during this journey of the meteoroid into the earth's atmosphere it appears a light phenomena light phenomenon of your visual like a burning ball like a burning ball it will move towards earth surface with a great speed so it is a, it appears like a shooting star so that's why meteor is also known as shooting star so where it shows a light phenomena when it enters into the earth's atmosphere and finally meteoroid 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 so it is the spelling is small mistake here it is meteoroid meteoroid is a meteoroid only meteoroid is a meteoroid only but that survives the voyage that survives this journey through the earth's atmosphere and lands on the surface that means if you see if a meteor enters if a meteor enters first of all it is meteoroid okay it is a meteoroid once it is entered into the earth's atmosphere so imagine that this is a meteoroid meteoroid so this is meteoroid once it is entered into the atmosphere earth's atmosphere and during this time it is like a uh, lot of energy lot of collisions it is burning so during this stage it is called meteor during this stage it is called meteor but after means uh, the size may be very huge uh, while entering the earth's atmosphere but because of these collisions and energy lot of collisions it will break down into smaller pieces and smaller pieces any one piece if it sustains this voyage this journey may reach the earth atmosphere a small piece may reach the earth atmosphere this small piece which reached the earth atmosphere is called meteoroid meteoroid so that's the difference between meteoroid meteor and meteorite so the same material different stages out of earth's atmosphere it is called meteoroid during the journey in the atmosphere uh, it is called meteor once it reaches the surface it is called meteorite but almost 99 percentage of the meteoroids will not reach the earth's surface it will break down and become pieces in uh, become pieces and they will become part and parcel of our uh, atmosphere so they may not reach the stage of meteorite okay
this is all about the meteoroids so i hope you have you got complete clarity on what is meant by asteroid comet meteoroid meteor and meteorite so those were the differences so don't be don't get frequently confused about this concepts and the final topic of the day is about geo government order 111 this particular topic is about the telangana government telangana state so earlier uh, in 1996 it is a environmental protected so this geo 11 geo 111 has been passed in order to protect the environment around the two major lakes of hyderabad we know that the hyderabad is the capital city of telangana so there were okay means the there are two lakes in hyderabad usman sagar and imayat sagar lakes there are two lakes in uh, hyderabad earlier okay during the time of uh, nizam period okay uh, initial days of independence okay 1950s and 1960s these two usman sagar and imayat sagar used to provide the drinking water and all other water needs of the hyderabad city okay in 1970s and 90s as well usman sagar and imayat sagar were pro were giving all water needs what satisfying the water needs of the hyderabad city uh, but as of now there are different rivers whether it is uh, uh, different uh, water from different rivers has been getting to the hyderabad so the relevance of usman sagar and imayat sagar as the providers of water decreased today but however during 1996 the government of andhra pradesh undivided andhra pradesh passed a geo known as 111 according to this geo the construction of industries colonies hotels and other bigger structures are banned okay not allowed within the 10 kilometer radius of the usman sagar and imayat sagar catchment areas <coughs> If suppose this is Usman Sagar, if this is Usman Sagar, around that, around that, if this is catchment area of the Usman Sagar, around that, up to 10 kilometers, up to 10 kilometers, okay, there will not be, it will not allow to start any business activity or industries, residential colonies, hotels, permanent bigger structures cannot be allowed in this uh, area, around the catchment area of these two lakes so in order to protect these lakes and in order to save these lakes from encroachment geo 111 was a <coughs> protecting this but today if you see unfortunately telangana government has removed as withdrawn withdrawn the geo 111 and it diluted geo 111 by passing the new government order so that's why environmentalists are slamming or blaming the Telangana government for removing the GO111 and the environmentalists, environmentalists also believe that this will wreak the havoc on the area's vulnerable environment okay so if you see these particular lakes have been constructed by damming the Musi river okay if this is Musi river so at two places the dam dams have been constructed so one is Usman Sagar and other is Imayat Sagar. So that is how these two lakes have been uh, created artificially during the time of Mir Usman Hali Khan. Okay. So from those days, from almost 1920s, it is satisfying the water needs of Hyderabad city. Okay. But today, uh, as the government, what is the argument of the government? The government, Telangana government, is saying that today the relevance of these two lakes have been decreased. Why? Because they are not providing the drinking water to Hyderabad. They are not satisfying the needs of Hyderabad. Anyway, we are getting the water from different rivers. Okay, different rivers. Krishna water is being got to the Hyderabad. So, so that's the reason why. So, other rivers are providing the water facilities in Hyderabad. So, the relevance of Usman Sagar and Imad Sagar has decreased. So that's the and at the same time, the other side of the the other side of the coin is, if you see this area, if you see this area around Usman Sagar and Imad Sagar, okay, this has become a good, uh, very uh, what can I say, a strong area of real estate, 
that means this the, the value of land the real estate value is of great boom here because the software industries around gachibowli uh, or the software industries in hyderabad locate very nearer to these localities of these lakes so there was a great demand on uh, means unofficial demand from the real estateers or realtors on the government to liberalize the laws in this area so that they can go for bigger constructions and make money out of these constructions so that's the reason why it must uh, maybe okay the reason maybe uh, one of the reason maybe this also okay even though the government is saying that the relevance of these two lakes reduced as the d- suppliers of drinking water the more relevant means the relevance of these two lakes increased now on the other side because they become a very very costly area around the hyderabad right so keeping this in mind we so we must encourage such laws so government go 111 so the scrapping of go 111 is against the environmental interests of the country so that's the reason why uh, environmentalists are slamming the telangana government for doing so this is all for today thank you